Greetings from the End Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church, located at 650 South Warren Avenue in Columbus, Ohio, where Jesus is Lord and our pastor is Bishop Dr. Derek A. Reeves. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, our order of services have changed and are as follows. Sunday school at 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship at 11 a.m. Our weekday services, Tuesday, Bible study at 6 p.m. Wednesday, corporate prayer at 6 p.m. Our services will be available via Zoom and Facebook Live. Let us join in as the Word of God comes forth that is able to heal, save, and deliver. Amen. God bless you. So we thank the Lord for all that he's done. If you will, please turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter number 22, verses 31 through 34. Then I'll drop down to verses 49 through 51. And then we will look at verses 59 through 62. I do solicit your prayers this morning. I do solicit your prayers on this morning. Book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 through 34. And the word of the Lord is pinned on this wise. The word of the Lord is pinned on this wise. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Thank you, Lord. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Thank you, Lord. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Verse 49. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Verse 59. And about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Amen. We're going to uh, take our message from the context of all of these particular scriptures, but I want to look particularly at uh, verse number 31. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Drop down to verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. And the Lord turned and looked unto Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he has said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. This morning I would like to uh, speak briefly on the topic entitled Kingdom Obedience is Better Than Sacrifice. Kingdom Obedience 
is better than sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, it is interesting to note that uh, we can learn a lot from the scriptures. The Bible says that the Old Testament was written for our example. In other words, it was written to give us an outline on how we can apply the scriptures in our lives. And not just apply the scripture in our lives, but we can utilize the scripture so that we then can uh, use it as an indication of what to do and what not to do and how God then can move on our behalf. It is said, brothers and sisters, that the Bible was not necessarily written to us, but the Bible was written for us. In other words, when you look at the scriptures and you look at the Old and New Testaments, uh, they were written to particular people or written for a specific circumstance and situation that transpired or what was going on in that day and in that time period. Uh, the Bible says, and to the angel of the church of Ephesus, uh, to the angel of the church of Smyrna. Uh, the Bible says that Paul writing to Timothy, my dearly beloved son in the gospel. And so the Bible was written to particular people for that particular time period. And so uh, the Bible wasn't necessarily written to us. Hear what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not suggesting that the Bible is not the infallible inspired word of God. But please understand what I'm saying. The Bible wasn't necessarily written to us, but the Bible was written for us. In other words, we can, again, there are examples and doctrinal things that we are to use so that we can apply it and make it applicable in our lives. And, and so when we look at this particular scripture, brothers and sisters, we can see and we can note that uh, looking at the apostle Peter and the other apostles, I believe that there are uh, various things that we can extrapolate from their lives. There are various things that we can pull from from their lives that we can look at, not only uh, look at it from an applicable situation, but also how we are to structure our mind and structure our heart. And, and, and so this is where we look at Jesus. We, we see Jesus and the apostles and Jesus and the apostles being linked together, being connected together. And as they were connected together, we, we know the story that the apostles were uh, specifically hand chosen by the Lord himself. The Bible says that Jesus, he, he went up to the mountain and began to pray. And if I could just take a parenthetical digression here, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, prior to Jesus actually making the decision to pinpoint the disciples that were necessary and needed for the mission, I think Jesus gives us a protocol that you and I can outline in our lives uh, before we make drastic decisions. The Bible says that he went up by himself on the mountain to pray. Why? Because he had to seclude himself. He had to separate himself where it was just him and God. He realized the mission that God gave him. He understood, uh, the Bible says, the mission that he came to do. At one point, Jesus said, this was the reason, Pontius Pilate, why I came into the world. He knew why he came. He knew what he had to suffer. But at the same token, he understood that there were some people, specific type of people, individuals, that he was responsible to, that God would bind to him that he would fill his life in, that he would fill the teachings and directives in, that he would instruct personally. Why? Because the kingdom had to go forward. Jesus realized that it was not just about him. Glory be to God. He understood that it was not just about him, but it was all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. Jesus' whole responsibility uh, was to promote and to expand the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I've come not uh, to do my own thing, uh, but I've come to do the will of him that sent me. I not only come to do the will of him that sent me, but the Bible says my meat is to do his will and 
to finish his work. Uh, uh, Jesus knew and understood that I need to expand this thing and, and this thing cannot stop with me. Uh, uh, the Bible says that Jesus indicated that if the kernel abides, uh, then it cannot grow, but uh, the seed must die. Uh, the seed must go into the earth. Uh, uh, there has to be a dying process. Uh, why? So that everything that's within me, uh, Jesus said, can be released. Uh, hallelujah. And bring the increase uh, that it is designed to bring. So Jesus, uh, he was always kingdom perspective. Uh, he always had kingdom motives. Uh, and he was all about expanding the kingdom. So Jesus himself, uh, uh, before he made these decisions, the Bible says that he secluded himself and, and went to the mountain to pray. And it, it was an all-night prayer vigil, uh, uh, ensuring and, and getting the directives of God, getting uh, uh, the mind of God, uh, getting God's perspective and getting God's mindset as to who is it uh, that I am to use uh, to pour my life into and to pour my instruction into that go oh, father that you will use uh, hallelujah to bring about an increase and to expand uh, this thing uh, Jesus went all night uh, praying and the Bible says uh, that after he spent all night praying he came down uh, uh, he already had disciples uh, but now he says I need the twelve uh, and then he came down and chose uh, the twelve uh, and the Bible says there are no other after this order this was a special order uh, the apostles those uh, who were uh, to be the pillars uh, of the church uh, Jesus Christ is the foundation but these are the pillars these are the individuals that promulgated and promoted the doctrine of Christ you know the scripture in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on unto perfection Hallelujah. So uh, these apostles were, were responsible for exposing and for uh, releasing and establishing the doctrines that Jesus Christ himself taught. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, I want you to realize uh, that when God called you, uh, when God chose you, uh, uh, glory as God uh, from the annals of time and beyond uh, space and time, uh, uh, like he told uh, the prophet, while you were yet in your mother's womb, uh, I knew you and I chose you. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, you have to realize that God has chosen you, that you have a special place in the kingdom of God, that you have a special design in the kingdom of God, that God has meticulously and, and, and so strategically placed you and raised you uh, so that everything you went through in your life uh, uh, can be used for his glory. Uh, uh, God, uh, mm, glory be to God, God didn't necessarily uh, ordain and want you to get abused the way that you were abused. Uh, uh, but in God's infinite wisdom and in his omniscience, uh, uh, he said the things that the enemy will do in your life uh, uh, to try to destroy you. Uh, Huh, he said that I would use those things to, to, to meticulously and, and intimately uh, construct your mind and your heart uh, so that you can think a certain way, so that you can praise a certain way, so that you can worship me a certain way. He said, if, if, if you were not made uh, the way that you are made, uh, glory be to God, uh, hallelujah, I couldn't use you in the capacity that I'm using you now. Just like a tapestry, uh, uh, the very things the enemy tried to do uh, to cause you to lose your mind to cause you uh, uh, to leave this earth uh, the very hell that you've been through uh, that caused some people to almost lose their life uh, or take their life uh, God said I'm able to use that pain uh, I'm able to use that circumstance uh, and the very thing like Joseph said uh, the very thing you thought for evil uh, 
God meant it for my good. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, every tribulation, uh, every trial, uh, every circumstance, uh, every hell that I've gone through. Uh, devil, you tried to take my life. Uh, you tried to take me out of here. Uh, but to God be the glory. Uh, I'm still still here to God be the glory I can still raise my hands to God be the glory he can use my mess he can use my muck and in my transformation he can use me to his glory in my transformation he can use me for his name's sake to God be the glory to God be the glory to God God be the glory for all that he's done. Shout of God, put your hands together and give your God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh glory, what an encouraging thing to note, child of God, to know that even through all of my situations, that God still chose me. The Bible says that Jesus went to the mount and prayed and got his directives from God. Ah, God being omniscient, knowing the end from the beginning. He knew the very thing that the apostles were going to go through. He, he knew their upsets and their down rising and upsettings. He, he knew the times where they would not be as faithful. But God said, there's still something in you that I desire to use. There's still something in you that I see that can be used for my glory. God knew the things that Peter was going to go through. He knew the challenges that were connected to Peter. Peter, a brash man. Peter, very impulsive. Some would say he he was kind of sanguinish, if you will. Uh, uh, he, he spoke before he thought. Uh, uh, the first thing that came to his mind, uh, hallelujah, he would say it. Uh, glory be to God. Not fully realizing the weight behind what he said. Uh, there are times, brothers and sisters, that uh, we'll get into a place where we'll speak specific things and say certain things, but you have to understand what is truly in your subconscious, or are you just speaking from a conscious level? This was Peter. Peter was used to speaking consciously, but, but not really examining his subconscious, knowing what was really inside of him. You know the story uh, if we could travel through time we, we see many times Peter uh, getting himself in mistakes and issues and situations Ah, one point uh, the Bible says whom do men say that I am Jesus asked the question whom do men say that I am and, and some said Elias and, and some said a prophet but again here's Peter through impulse uh, ah, glory be to God it, it came from the father Jesus said uh, but G oh, Peter impulsively said thou art the Christ the son of the living God there are pros and cons uh, uh, to those who can move without thinking. Uh, uh, glory. The pro is that when God moves you, uh, uh, you don't try to go through the whole ratiocinating process, uh, trying to go through and deconstruct how it's going to work. Uh, I'm guilty of it. Uh, how it's going to work? How are we going to put it together? What plans? Uh, uh, what's the A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Uh, what's the A1, uh, A2, uh, A3, and then the B? Uh, Glory be to God. So those who are impulsive, glory, it can work very good at times because when God says move, uh, uh, they don't need the blueprint. Uh, they don't need the, the directives. Uh, so Peter immediately said, uh, uh, whom do men say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ. Uh, mm, thou art the son of the living God. Uh, he received a special blessing uh, from the Lord. Uh, uh, how awesome. Can I just take a segue? Uh, how awesome is that, brothers and sisters, uh, that you can be before God uh, and he gives you a special blessing uh, based off of a revelation that God gave you. Uh, glory be to God. And you were just uh, obedient uh, to do what God told you to do. 
the revelation didn't even come from Peter. Uh, the Bible says that the father, he said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for what you have did not come from you. Uh, but my father, which was in heaven, gave it to you. Uh, but because you were obedient, uh, hallelujah, to listen and to obey. Uh, listen, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Uh, so Jesus was soliciting a response. Uh, glory. Uh, and so it had to be affirmed in heaven and on earth earth uh, who Jesus Christ was uh, so you need out of the mouth of multiple witnesses uh, glory be to God uh, and so it was already affirmed in heaven but now God said uh, to be able to judge the remainder of those that remain uh, if one person uh, can get the revelation that I am the Christ uh, that means every person could get the revelation uh, that I am the Christ uh, their heart just has to be open to the word uh, and so Jesus said oh I'm going to bless you Simon Barjona how awesome is that uh, God blessing me uh, because he moved upon my heart uh, to do the will and goodwill of his pleasure uh, but because I was obedient he empowers my mind uh, he empowers my heart uh, he opens up the reservoirs uh, of his anointing uh, he allows me to see him uh, in a greater facet what an awesome God we serve uh, in him we move uh, in him we live uh, and in him we have our being uh, rightfully it is said uh, about Jesus where he said without me uh, you can do nothing uh, if we can just take a praise break uh, you and I need to realize uh, that it's the Lord uh, who's empowering your body it's the Lord uh, that's strengthening your mind uh, you think it's you because you're prosperous no honey uh, it's the Lord uh, you think it's you getting those good grades students uh, no uh, it's the Lord uh, you think it's you that's making you prosper on your job uh, no uh, it's the Lord uh, you think it's you keeping your mind uh, from going crazy uh, no uh, it's the Lord uh, for in him I move in him I live and in him I have my being Lord I need you I need the oh I need the every hour I need the every moment Lord I need you when I wake Lord be there when I move Lord be there when I take every step Lord be there because if you don't go with me I I will not go. Oh, give God some praise. Give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like the Lord. Just like the Lord. Blessing. Blessing us. Hallelujah. Blessing us off of the very thing that he inspired us to do. Glory. And because we were obedient to hear his word and because we are obedient to move he blesses obedience and so we see uh, through Peter's life how there were times where it functioned greatly uh, but then we see times where he was challenged on it and, and you got the opportunity to see truly what was in Peter's subconscious. You remember the story brothers and sisters where Jesus he, he came down from the mountain and the Bible says and he was walking on the water and, and the apostles were afraid, the Bible says, because they thought it was a ghost. They thought it was a spirit. Uh, mm, but then Peter, through his sanguineous, uh, that may not be a word, Bishop, I apologize. You know, Bishop, he knows all those big words, uh, uh, which, which he's teaching me. Uh, he knows those technical terms. I'm not messing it up, Brother Patrick. Uh, but through his sanguineous, uh, hallelujah, we're going to make that our own term. Uh, if you can spell it, put it in the chat, sanguineous. Uh, through Peter's sanguineness, uh, we see it happening where uh, it, it fought against him to a degree because he said, Jesus, if it be you, uh, I see that you're on this water, you're walking on this water, you tell us not to be afraid, uh, but if it is really you, bid me to come. Uh, glory. And Jesus said, come. 
You know the story, brothers and sisters. And based off of that word, you see Peter now walking on the water. Uh, Jesus had to say come because he, he, Peter so stationed the question that uh, Jesus had to respond in a way that Peter could do it. Uh, because he said, if it be you, bid me to come. Uh, it was him. If he didn't bid him to come, what? Uh, then it would cast doubt as to who he was. Uh, so Lord, if it be you, be careful with those type of prayers. Uh, Lord, uh, if it's your will, uh, let the door open for me. Please uh, make sure in your subconscious uh, that you truly have the faith and mean uh, the things that you're saying. And so when Peter went out, uh, he began to walk upon the water. Uh, uh, how did we know that that was not in his subconscious, but it was just in his conscious mind? Because when, when the travail came, the Bible says that the waves begin to war and, and it becomes so violent. Peter then uh, began to lose faith and he began to sink. Uh, hallelujah. So we see the positive uh, and we see the negative. And so Peter, uh, he then gives us an example, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, of, of our lives. He gives us an example of how we are to approach the Lord. He gives us an example of the things that we should do. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. And, and so Peter being the central person, that we're focusing on. Uh, we see now in our scripture, I have to run through this. We see <clears throat> in our text, uh, the Bible says that Peter then, uh, uh, during the time period after Jesus, through the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus now is at the point where, hallelujah, it, he's now come to fulfill the purpose in which he had come. The Bible says he was now fulfilling his passion. And, and now comes the opportunity for those that are directly linked to Jesus and connected to Jesus, now comes the opportunity for them to move to a higher realm of relationship. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, the, the passion had to happen. The passion had to happen. Why? Because he had to be crucified. Uh, uh, but I believe, and this is just how I see the text. You don't have to believe this, but how I'm reading the text... Uh, I believe that the apostles did not have to scatter the way that they scattered. Hear what I'm saying? Uh, yes, the Bible says, smite the shepherd, uh, the sheep will scatter. And prophetically, the Bible talks about how they would all leave him. But <clears throat> I'm of the persuasion that they did not have to scatter the way that they scattered. Why? Because when Jesus went to pray, Remember, Jesus went to pray. The Bible says that he told them to pray that you enter not into temptation. <clears throat> but the Bible says that they were so asleep and so sleepy that uh, three times Jesus had to come. And finally, he said that your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so they were going through and, and so they did not have to leave the way that they were, that they left. Uh, mm, the Bible says uh, that uh, Jesus said, just take this time of prayer. Take this season of prayer, uh, the time where your flesh is weak. Your spirit may be willing, but your flesh is weak. In other words, uh, the spirit is definitely willing to push you to a new realm of obedience, to a new realm of sacrifice, to a new realm of connection. The spirit is willing, uh, but the flesh uh, is weak. We are living now in the, in the day and time, uh, and we have encroached, and we have fastly approached the time, brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, don't you see it? Where there are many people who ascribe to the name of Christ. Uh, there are many who say that they are Christians, and many are saying that they, they believe in the Christ of the Bible. Ah, they believe in the Christ of the Bible somewhat, but they do not believe in the commandments of the Christ of, of the Bible. Uh, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we are now at a position and place uh, uh, where everything that you hold dear in Christ will be challenged. Uh, uh, the very doctrinal stances will be challenged. Uh, your relationship with him will be challenged. 
your connection with him will be challenged that's what we see with the apostles brothers and sisters it came a point in time where Jesus was now going through his passion and and all of his apostles that were around him now everything that they've learned everything that they went through everything that they endeavored was now going to be challenged. Ah, what's going to happen when you have to face death? What, oh, what's going to happen when you have to face losing everything? or standing for Christ what is going to happen uh, when you're faced with the decision uh, to say for Christ I live for Jesus I live for his name I stand or else I have to die what's going to happen glory be to God when you're faced with the situation uh, where the enemy says uh, glory if you name the name of Christ uh, I'm going to take you out if you keep preaching or teaching that thing uh, I'm going to take you out uh, if you even mention uh, anything in these scriptures uh, I'm going to take you out Oh, many people uh, uh, give Peter a bad name uh, and a bad rap. Uh, uh, they look at Peter and the apostles during this time period. Uh, uh, the Bible says uh, that Jesus said, Peter, uh, glory be to God, the devil seeks uh, to sift you as wheat. Uh, uh, glory. He says the devil is seeking uh, to sift you as wheat. Uh, when you look at this scripture, many commentators say uh, that when you look at this, it was not only singular dealing with Peter, but uh, uh, it was a, in a plural sense. Uh, so in other words, uh, uh, Jesus was trying to tell Peter and the apostles. Uh, remember, this is during the uh, time where Jesus is praying and, and after Gethsemane and after uh, his, his, his sweat was like blood, uh, after he told them to sleep on. Uh, uh, glory be to God. He says, listen, Peter, uh, the devil is desiring to sift you all uh, as we eat. Oh, we are here, brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, we're here at a time uh, where the devil is desiring to sift uh, the body of Christ as wheat. Uh, uh, the sifting process, uh, uh, if you recall, uh, was when they had the wheat and the chaff, uh, and then they would vigorously shake uh, the wheat and the chaff and throw it up in the air. Uh, and the very thing that had no weight to it, the chaff, uh, would separate uh, from the very thing that has substance to it which would be the wheat but it was a violent shaking and a tossing and a great wind hallelujah that caused the separation uh, Jesus said oh Peter uh, the devil is seeking to sift you as wheat uh, he says not only sift you all as wheat uh, but look at it brothers and sisters he said I want he's trying to separate you from the Lord himself He's trying to separate you from the very thing that gives you substance. He's trying to separate you from the substance that's connected to Christ. Glory. Not only is he trying to separate you from Christ, but he's trying to separate the whole body. The devil's trying to seek to separate you from me. And he's trying to separate each one of you from each other. Do you see it, child of God? He says the devil's seeking to sift you as wheat. Uh, sifting also refers to uh, where there is an inward agitation. Uh, hallelujah. Where there is a trying of one's own faith uh, to try to overturn them. Uh, and so he says the devil's trying to put you in a position uh, glory be to God uh, where he's trying to agitate you to such a degree where uh, he's trying to have your faith uh, so agitated so he can overturn you. Uh, he's trying to separate you from each other. Uh, he's trying to separate you from me. Uh, and he's trying to agitate you so inwardly. Uh, hallelujah. That he overturns your confidence, uh, your credence, uh, and your connection with me. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, uh, this is the time that we are in. Uh, and so uh, our beloved Lord and Savior said, uh, but I have prayed for you. 
Glory be to God. I have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. Hallelujah. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, he says, I have prayed for you uh, that your faith does not fail. Uh, hallelujah. I'm coming and I'm praying. Uh, I'm lifting you up uh, and I'm keeping you in my hand uh, uh, because I see the time uh, where you will repent. Uh, I see the time uh, where you will convert. I see the time, uh, hallelujah, where, uh, glory be to God, the enemy won't overturn you uh, because I have you in my hand, uh, glory, but I have prayed that your faith uh, does not fail, uh, but look at what transpires, uh, uh, the Bible says that when Jesus told this to Peter, uh, Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Ah, glory be to God. Consciously, uh, uh, Peter thought it was in his subconscious uh, that he was ready to go to prison and die with the Lord. Uh, oh, glory. Uh, but consciously, in his upper level, uh, it was not, it was there, uh, but it wasn't in his subconscious. Uh, uh, you've heard our bishop talk about, uh, and I won't uh, belabor the time, but I'll briefly hit it. Uh, your subconscious is the area of your awareness or consciousness uh, where, uh, glory be to God, it is underneath your conscious level. Uh, it's not active conscious, but it's subconscious. And it's believed uh, that it's your subconscious area that will, uh, glory, that leads and guides and directs you in all of the decisions that you make. Uh, you're not actively thinking about it. Uh, <clears throat> glory be to God. It is the area of the heart, if you will. Uh, uh, it is that portion of the heart uh, where the Bible says, <clears throat> out of the abundance of the heart, uh, the mouth speaks. Uh, so it is the subconscious area that that leads and guides everything that we do. What we place in our subconscious mind guides our conscious mind and actions. But what transpires is uh, there are a lot of people who have on a conscious level, on an upper level, Lord, I will serve you until I die. That was Peter. Uh, on a conscious level, he said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and I'm ready to die with you. Oh, do you see it, brothers and sisters? He said, uh, I'm willing to go to prison with you and uh, I'm ready to die with you. Oh, uh, uh, to know what is truly in your subconscious, uh, uh, you and I have to be placed in situations uh, that causes us to make an immediate response. Uh, if you want to know if cussing is in you, uh, let somebody cut you off uh, smack you or call you the wrong name hmm. glory be to God oh glory uh, some people say I never cuss nobody out I ain't cussing using the devil's language oh glory but then somebody cuts you off hallelujah somebody call you the wrong name Next thing you know, I'm out. Oh, oh, glory, I'm gonna move on. Hallelujah. And and so uh, you see what's in you. Hallelujah. What's in your subconscious? Uh, and so how do you get things in your subconscious? Things, uh, uh, and we'll talk more about this next week, but things uh, that you continually place in you, that you ruminate over, it, it, it enters into your subconscious. It's a program. Uh, your subconscious is not, does it, it's not moral in that it doesn't know good or bad. Uh, it just takes the software. It takes the program. Uh, and when it takes the program, it then uh, releases the program and drives uh, how your actions are uh, and then the things that you speak and do uh, develops oh glory uh, proteins in your brain as bishop talked about the plasticity of the brain develops the proteins in the brain where you then reinforce and enact the things uh, glory be to god that you begin to think about and do uh, and so let's move back to peter we have to move on uh, uh, we see him now peter uh, he's here with the lord uh, and he's here ready uh, making his confession 
glory. Uh, kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, we see brothers and sisters that they are here. Uh, Peter and the apostles are here. Uh, and now he comes before the Lord and, and then the Lord tells him uh, that all of you shall leave me. Uh, uh, he begins to instruct them, trying to let them know, uh, I need to go through and I'm about to be uh, uh, go through my passion, but uh, uh, you're all going to be scattered uh, for me. You're going to be offended uh, by me. Uh, and if you go through and look at all the rest of the epistles, uh, or excuse me, the rest of the gospels, uh, we get a clearer picture. Uh, our glory. But Peter says, uh, oh Lord, though all leave you, uh, I will not be offended by you. Uh, I'm ready to die and I'm ready to go to prison with you. Uh, uh, kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, uh, many of us are giving sacrifice with our lips. Uh, we're giving sacrifice uh, uh, with the things that we're doing. Uh, we're giving sacrifice, uh, uh, just uttering things, uh, lifting up our hands and, and lifting up our mouths. Uh, uh, we give the sacrifice of praise. Uh, but the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice uh, and to hearken than the fat of ram. Uh, you can oh, oh glory uh, you can give all kind of sacrifices brother Marcus uh, you can give 50,000 in the offering uh, you can be a great worship leader your voice uh, can be melodies from heaven uh, rain down on me uh, your voice can be one of the most angelic uh, oh glory be to God. But the Bible says uh, that obedience is better than sacrifice before uh, you offer the sacrifice of your lips uh, you and I need to make sure uh, that we have obedience and etched uh, in our subconscious uh, uh, so Peter was here at this point uh, uh, Peter was here at this point he, he consciously uh, or he subconsciously thought uh, that he was ready to live and die for the Lord uh, he subconsciously thought uh, that he was ready to go to prison with the Lord uh, but we soon find out uh, uh, that it was not truly in his subconscious. Uh, uh, he had a form of obedience, uh, but he did not have the substance behind it. Uh, uh, when I say I'm ready to obey, uh, I'm ready to obey in all things. Uh, Lord, wherever you lead me, I will follow. Uh, Lord, whatever you tell me to do, I'm willing to go. Uh, however you tell me to glorify you, I'm willing to glorify you. If it means that I miss the million dollar deal Lord I glorify you. If it means that I lose my job Lord I glorify you. If it means uh, that I'm separated from uh, friends and family, uh, Lord, I glorify you. Uh, and so we see Peter now. Uh, uh, he's going through these situations. Uh, uh, but then uh, they come to the point uh, where his confession uh, is tested. Uh, brothers and sisters realize uh, that our confession of the Lord uh, will always be tested. Uh, uh, if we say for God I live and God I die uh, uh, don't worry uh, you'll have an opportunity uh, to either live that confession uh, or put that confession down uh, kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice the Bible says uh, that when they came to take Jesus uh, uh, the Bible says that when they grabbed the Lord uh, the book of John says uh, that it was Malchus uh, the servant uh, of the armament uh, he tried to grab Jesus uh, and we know that it was Peter uh, glory be to God uh, who took the sword uh, now I need to give this backdrop and I'll be done uh, if you look in the book of Luke a little bit earlier uh, uh, Jesus said at one point uh, they said Lord uh, Jesus said listen uh, I told you not to carry any knives uh, or anything to protect yourself uh, but now I need you to carry it to protect yourself uh, so Jesus just told them hmm, glory uh, I'm gonna mess up some people's theology uh, Jesus just told them 
glory uh, to get some things to protect yourself uh, because he knew that he would no longer be there to protect them uh, glory uh, so in Peter's mind uh, Peter is saying Lord uh, I got my weapon uh, I'm ready to fight uh, and I'm ready to die if I need to uh, I'm ready to use these weapons uh, glory you told me to get them uh, now I'm ready to use them uh, I'm ready to not only go to prison, uh, but to die uh, if need be. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, and so what transpired is, uh, uh, as they came, hmm, uh, remember in his mind we got these weapons. Uh, and so uh, the Bible says they came and grabbed Jesus. Uh, and when they grabbed Jesus, uh, uh, the Bible says it gives us a bigger picture. Uh, see, you and I can't move. Uh, uh, kingdom obedience uh, is better than sacrifice. See, we have to see the leading and guiding of the Lord. And the book of John, the Bible, gives us uh, what transpired. And Jesus was trying to give them the illustration. For this was the time for him to go. Remember in the book of John, they came and said, Jesus said, whom seek ye? He said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. The Bible says they fell out. So Jesus was giving the president. I don't need anybody to fight for me don't you know that if I call a legion they will come down glory be to God so Peter should have seen his direction of the Lord realizing it's not time to fight like this ah but Peter oh glory not seeking God and not having obedience in his heart not having kingdom obedience in his subconscious mind see when you have kingdoms obedience in your subconscious you don't care what the Lord says you're willing to do whether it goes against how you view things, uh, whether it goes against your doctrine, uh, whether it goes against your theology, uh, whether it goes against how you think it should go. Uh, if God says do it uh, this way, this is the way that you have to do it. Uh, kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, uh, so Peter now, uh, uh, they grab him uh, the second time. The Bible says uh, that Peter takes his sword uh, and strikes off Malchus' ear. Oh, glory. Uh, and now we see what's really in the subconscious of Peter. Uh, though he confessed uh, he would not leave the Lord. Uh, but when he was faced uh, with something that messed up his theology, uh, when he was faced uh, with something that seemed to contradict what the Lord had told him, uh, but really didn't, uh, but it seemed to contradict uh, what the Lord told him, uh, instead of doing and going by what Jesus did, uh, Peter wanted to do his own thing but Jesus lifted up the ear and healed Malchus and told Peter they that live by the sword will die by the sword if I can just take a brief segue here look at the love of Jesus hallelujah Jesus even in that action was stopping something from initiating in Peter's life that he himself would not be able Able to complete uh, the Bible says if you strike the soldiers uh, you not only would go to prison uh, but many times were worthy of death uh, and the Lord said it's not time for you to die yet Peter the law of the originator terminator uh, or the law of the auctor uh, what begins something that's how you'll end it uh, uh, Jesus said they that live by the sword uh, will die by the sword uh, so Jesus immediately Immediately picking up the ear and healing Malchus stopped what Peter set into motion through his emotions and so when that happened it took Peter by surprise Peter didn't know what to do he now was faced with something that was very tragic in his mind 
Oh, brothers and sisters, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when it comes time to stand for the Lord? You and I will all be in a position and we're all coming to the time. Glory be to God where our confession with the Lord, hallelujah, must stand strong. You and I will be put in a position, hallelujah, where we have to say for God I live and God I die. Peter, it was not in his subconscious. The Bible says that he didn't have kingdom obedience. He gave the sacrifice of his life. He sacrificed himself, but he was not obedient to doing what God said. And as a result, the Bible says that Peter fled along with the other apostles. What will you do? Brothers and sisters, what will you do? Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. We're moving to the time where God is calling us to be ever so sensitive to hear his voice ever so sensitive to discern his word ever so sensitive to move through his leading and guiding the same old same old won't do the same way won't do God is moving us to a new realm of obedience you will be called to give your all you are called to give your life if any man follows me let him pick up his cross and deny himself and follow me daily if any man would lose his life if you're going to follow me you must lose your life you must lose yourself and gain me for to live is Christ and to die is gain kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice in the face of losing it all in the face of losing it all in the face of a world who's teaching philosophies against the Bible teaching against the scripture teaching against the inerrant word teaching saying that there is multiple ways uh, to go to heaven uh, that you can live any way you want uh, and still be right uh, that you can say what you want uh, and still be saved uh, the bible says uh, and such uh, were some of you uh, we used to be in dark uh, but now we're children of the light uh, walk uh, as children of light uh, walk uh, as children of god for the sons of god uh, are they that are led by the Spirit. His Spirit dictates that we should change and the foundation of God stands sure. And this is the seal of the Lord. The Lord knows those who are His. And let every person, every name, every person that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Kingdom of obedience is better than sacrifice because when I obey when I obey when I'm obedient I'm able to function according to his word when I'm obedient he opens the reservoirs of anointing anointing power and might only comes when I'm obedient if he says lift your hands lift your hands if he says do your dance do your dance if he says praise praise him if he says stand for me stand for him if he says say that Jesus is Lord say Jesus is Lord kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice in the last of the last days there will be those who have a form of godliness but deny the power to it God said don't deny my power don't deny my holiness don't deny me but don't have the form have the true power in the last days the Spirit says, those loving themselves, boasters, proud, lovers of their own selves, leaving the gospel, leaving the word, 
ears itching, trying to seek false doctrine. But God said, don't let that be you. In the 21st century, God is needing kingdom citizens, kingdom champions, who walks in kingdom obedience, that no matter what happens, no matter what transpires, I'm going to stand on God's word. Whatever God called you to do, move in it quickly. Get to it quickly and stand in your place. Be counted. Be the warrior. Be the champion. Be all that God has called you to be. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice because when I obey, and I'm obedient when I listen and obedient he shows me the fat of the land he gives me the abundance I'm able to walk in the newness of life give God some praise in the house Oh, come on, give God some praise. 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 Go ahead and praise the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Kingdom obedience. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, we have to ensure that the very things that we're saying, the very things that we're desiring, we have to ensure that it is in our subconscious to really obey the Lord. Because when you truly have in your heart that you're going to obey him, even if you're faced with situations that seem to contradict, hear me, that seem to contradict everything that you believe God has told you, it will not cause you to deny him. You hear what I'm telling you? The Bible says that Peter's whole theology was thrown off. He saw the Lord heal the man. And now he's confused. But I think this gives us an analogy and shows us how there are times we can be spiritually sensitive to the things that we want to be spiritually sensitive to. But if it does not fully jive with what we truly want to do, we, we, we turn off those spiritual sensations. When it came time to know Jesus as one who had all power, Christ, the Mashiach, the anointed of God, Peter's spiritual spidey senses were, were on. Oh, he, he could hear from the Lord. Who, who am I? Thou art for Christ, the Son of the living God. But then when it came time for something that challenged Peter's true obedience to God, and when it challenged his perspective of what it looked like, now there's no spiritual revelation. Now he's not hearing from the Father. Why? Because when he should have been praying, he was sleeping. Listen, I'm not castigating him at all. There have been many a time that I had to repent. Okay? I had to repent. Uh, praying all night prayer. Wake up 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, Lord, help, help me. Lord, I'm so sorry. I repent, Jesus. You got, to, you got to build yourself up. I remember one time we had all night prayer here at the church, and I was praying over some prayer requests, and, and Bishop had to smack me, and not to get graphic, but I was drooling. I was even I was sleeping so hard I was even I was drooling it was horrible he had to smack me wake up woke up and I'm like oh 
Like, Lord, I'm sorry, that's nasty. <laughs> Come on, put in the chat, say, Pastor, you're not the only one. Someone, please tell me I'm not, let me know I'm not the only one. Let me know I'm not the only one. So not castigating Peter. But when he should have been praying so that he could, his spirit could be open so that he can make the right response, he was not. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. When we neglect those particular things that are necessary and we have a proclivity toward one thing. See, we can't serve based off of how we think service should go. I didn't say nothing deep, but I'm going to act like I did. You know, when people say something deep, they stop real. I'm going to act like I did. You can't, you and I cannot serve based off of how we think the service should go. Service is dictated based off of the person whom you are serving. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. And what happens is, brothers and sisters, when we are challenged with what we think service should look like, if it is not in our subconscious to just say yes, that's why I appreciate the song that Elder Coates started off singing. If it is not in our hearts to truly just say yes, yes to his will, yes to his way, then what transpires is when we're faced with something that seems to challenge our position, we'll be like Peter, and we will deny him, and we will leave him. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. This is a call, brothers and sisters, for all of us. The age in which we live now, the 21st century, with everything that's transpiring, if you can or have not noticed, we are moving, or we have already been plummeted into the place and position where everything that you have uh, believed in and every standard that you stand for according to the scriptures, it will be challenged. And people will quickly come after you for your confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will we obey or will we run? What will you do, brothers and sisters? What will you do? There are many where God is calling us to obey just to position ourselves in our place, in our position, and what God has called us to do. Glory be to God. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. And many of us, for whatever reason, we have not fully engaged ourselves to render ourselves unto him to expand his kingdom. What if the apostles, after they received the Holy Ghost, what if they had the revelation that I'm not called to be an apostle, I'm called to be a deacon, or I'm not called to be a deacon, I'm just called to sit at home. What would have happened? What would have happened? See, many people get prophecy and interpretation of stuff wrong. I'm reminded of Paul. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. When Paul received his call, the Bible says the Lord already told him, Elder, that you will have to suffer many things for my name's sake, but you will stand before X, Y, Z. Do you remember when the prophet I believe it was Agabus. He picked up Paul's girdle and he said, whoever this girl belongs to, when they go to Rome, they'll be in prison. Now, all the disciples and those connected, they tried to implore him not to go. They said, please don't go. Now listen, kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. It was in God's will for Paul to go. Because God already told Paul, 
where he was going to go and the things that he was going to do. See, they interpreted it based off of their fear. See, we think a lot of times if God is leading us into captivity or if God is leading us into trial and tribulation, that it's not God. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Lord, this ain't you. You better really pray and fast and see if it's him or not. Because there may be times that you're put on a ship where the whole ship is destroyed and you end up on an island witnessing to some people and healing folk. Glory be to God. If you look at that, the first time Paul was in prison, if he did not go, we would not have a good portion of the New Testament. Paul's prison epistles, I believe it was Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians. You understand, the prison epistles that he transcribed, I believe Romans, he wrote this, he wrote these while he was in, now if he did not go, God would not have inspired him during this time period to write and we wouldn't have a portion of the New Testament that we have. Kingdom obedience is better than sacrifice. Child of God, it's time for you to come forward. Understand that you and I are going to be faced with traumatic things and that the enemy is going to fight us and his desire is to sift us as wheat. And in the last of the last days, you'll have scoffers, those mocking seducing spirits but God needs you God needs you he's called you and he's chosen you for such a time as this the end time apostolic Christian holiness church would like to thank you for listening to the anointed word of God for a copy of this message or to receive information about the Apostolic Christian Holiness Ministry, contact us at 614-274-8217 or write to us at 650 South Warren Avenue, Columbus, Ohio 43204 or you can visit us on our web at www dot n dash time dot org we are conveniently located off of i-70 west exit 98a just five minutes west of downtown thank you for listening and until next time may god bless you and keep you